Well, you won't be able to see much, but I've got my brake line uh, hose. This one goes on the front motor mount right there and hangs down inside the frame rail. And me and Don picked up two pieces of 40-inch uh, brake line, 40, and I'm trying to connect the brakes. I got the pressure regulator here, and I got both other the other lines that are bent up, ready to go. Um, I just have to get one that goes from right here under the frame. There's one there. Makes a corner and goes up, comes up to the booster. And then the one that goes from the motor mount up to the booster, and then we can bleed the brakes. Good to go. I still got to take this wheel apart though because the um, parking brake don't want to work in that wheel for some reason. I don't. I think the ratcheting part of it is screwed up or popped off or something. But that's what's next. The brake lines in the front are all done. Thank God I did that a long time ago, at least six months ago, maybe four. But uh, this is actually the rear rubber hose from uh, Monte Carlo. That was a Nova. Um, I had to uh, adapt this thing to jump down and it bolts to the I-beam under there. I made a little bracket and then it splits out in the two brake lines. One of them is right there in the middle of the I-beam and it makes a curve and that goes to the Monte Carlo uh, rubber brake lines to the metric Monte Carlo calipers on my homemade brackets that are really nice. But uh, yeah, we're working on the brake lines and if I can get it to stop I can hook it up quick, throw the column in, and even back it out and drive it in. As long as it stops. No, that's wrong because I need a bolt that goes in the, I need a shoulder bolt that goes in there on the uh, brake pedal. Wicked bright and the sun's creeping in the garage. See, it's looking good. Here comes Don. <laughs> I won't put him on camera. He'll cry. Nah, he'll be alright. Looking good. You got one? I'm not Thanks. sure yet. Uh, to look from the pile of fittings. I'm going to buy an adapter to go from quarter to, what is it? 3 16 3 from that one. That one's quarter. All right, let me see what I got here. Never know. Well, we can buy it. Well, we had to do a little running around. I have to go from quarter inch to 3 16 brake line from the front. Like I said, because this is from a, uh, I think it was a Nova. It's the rear brake hose from a Nova, the rear end. And that mounts to the uh, front motor mount on this side, so I had to reduce it down to 3 16 Which we went to two or three stores to find this thing. But there it is. My brake line's over here. I'm going to start bending stuff. I have the bender. I have the little flare kit. I got all kinds of brake line ready to go. I don't like using the long ends. I don't like using the short ends. I like to be able to reach it. All right, here we go. Having fun. All right, well, it's going to be almost impossible to see this one, but there's my brake line right there. Comes up the other side right here. Follows the frame. Goes up towards the top. It's right there. And just as it breaks the firewall, it does a little bit of a left turn, goes up over it. Everything's nice and loose. I can put some insulators there. Let me show you the other side. Now it jumps over that frame, and it goes to right up to the uh, kick panel there on the firewall, and it goes straight up. And it ends right there. It meets a union. Now I'd love to bleed the brakes, but the union is the wrong one. When Don grabbed two unions, he grabbed the uh, newer ones with the double flare and all that crap. Everything I've done has been single flare. Now this is a, I think like Speedway sells this thing for like 40, 50 bucks. It's a hydraulic pressure regulator. And you need to turn down the pressure on the rear brakes so we got more braking power on the front, but that's about all I'll need. So I gotta get the union here. And I'll show you the back now. This one goes to the back, comes down, does a little swerve in, takes a hard turn, not a hard turn, but close enough. Goes under here, you can see it right there. Goes under this rail and then it does a U-turn. and goes out to here and you can see it through that hole. I'll see if I can get you in there. There's a union right there, which is the wrong one. And then that goes, of course, goes all the way up. Ends up here on the frame rail where there's all those rubber clips. I'm going to put some up front too. Goes up the kick up and comes around the back. 
let's see if I can see it from here, but maybe. It goes to a little tab that hangs off the frame. I don't know if you can see it. Where is it? I gotta get under here with it. Goes to a little tab on the frame. Of course, there's the brake hose on the ground. But it goes to a tab on the frame right there. I can get you there. There it is. Does a U turn. Comes off, goes to the factory Ford uh, tab for the 8.8 .8 rear end, of which isn't connected right now. I gotta connect that. But the hose is right here in the ground. And there's my rear brakes. So I gotta connect the hose over here, put the clip on it. I have to get the correct unions tomorrow because it's probably too late to get them now. And then uh, we can bleed the brakes. Oh, and I need that freaking bolt. I need a bolt to go through there. I gotta take that sucker out and measure it. I think it's a uh, half by two shoulder bolt to go through the pedal where the pedal goes. The pedal doesn't have any pivot point. I lost the bolt a long time ago. I don't know where it is. I've looked for it for a while. But So there's my brake lines. And nothing's real tight. Just works around in there nice. Nothing hitting. I'm gonna secure everything down and put rubber insulator so nothing rubs and wears and breaks and leaks and well, again looks good up here. Your firewall is there, so that's all you're gonna see. It's already the whole harness is here and BX cable, so and here's my rubber brake hose right there. And that doesn't it looks like it's right on top of something, but it's not even touching the airbag, it goes right around it, goes to the I-beam. And the I-beam splits out to those two plates and makes a curve here and goes up and there's your front brake. So i got to connect the line out back, get the correct union, a bolt for the uh, pedal, and uh, we can bleed the brakes tomorrow. And if I connect three wires, it'd start, but I'd have to put the column back in to turn the wheel, huh? We'll see. Um, I might just put the aluminum firewall in for now. And use a couple holes temporarily, you know, the half inch holes and the holes on the bottom, the original mark holes, to uh, secure it for now and uh, at least get everything going. I'd be driving it, but it wouldn't have a floor. Could move it in and out and uh, work on the floor soon enough. But uh, I had to take the heater box out, it was directly in the way of running the brake line, so I pulled that out for now. The flap control for it's hanging right there. But uh, yeah, good day. Went down, helped Dad put a window in the basement. Maybe you'll send me a picture. I doubt it. We'll see. Um, came home, ran out with Dawn, got brake lines, ran back out, got that adapter. We went all over Dodge looking for this freaking adapter. You can't see it. No, it's right there. Shiny brass down there. But, uh, we went all over the place looking for that. Three stores. So um, maybe tomorrow we'll have breaks. That'll be cool. Get the firewall in, temporarily secure it because I want to do. I don't have the money to buy the the tool that does all those pretty uh, aircraft rivets around the outside of the aluminum just yet, and, and it's not cheap. And I'd rather spend the money elsewhere right now. The rivets aren't going to get it running. I did make the uh, flaps for the side of the grill, but I don't like them. I'm going to work on it. I think it's only going to go from here to here, and then the rest is going to be a hood, and the hood will have them built onto it in aluminum or something. But We'll see. So, yeah. But it's like, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock. Everybody's closed. Here's the unions that are incorrect. I don't remember where we got them. The bag's over here somewhere. But, uh, the brake lines are in. I didn't have to cut and splice anything. Everything, uh, we measured it, and it turned out that one was like 39 inches and one was 40 inches. So, I got two 40 inch lines. And, you know, here and there I'd give it a little more of a twist. And I had plenty of play up here. I could pull them down, although you can't see it. And uh, it came up pretty cool. I mean, this one was like a quarter of an inch off. That one was like a half an inch off. And they, they reached with no problems. So soon enough, we will have juice brakes. Something of which this 31 Chevy didn't even know what it was. If you had seen the original, um, it was kind of creepy. Um, maybe as creepy as a Model A. It had... Uh, two rods. Well, you push the pedal, and that pedal would yank a cable, a rod, and that rod would run all the way to the back 
and it split across both sides and there was a, two cables going one going from each drum because it had drum brakes one from each drum off of that cable via a little bracket and then there was a rod reaching forward I believe it turned into a cable and then it went out front and connected to the back of the drums in the front And I mean, for a car that was its the fastest thing in 1931 of a top speed light, 62 miles an hour. Imagine trying to stop a car doing 60 miles an hour or so with your emergency brake every time. That's pretty much what it was. Nobody's here. So, uh, yeah. And then comes the doors and the rockers and the floors and the front seat. We've got a lot to go. I really haven't been out here. Um really busy with other things and you know life as usual but we got brakes one more step I gotta take the rear end out I gotta torque all the bolts I gotta put it back in after I get the axles we drilled uh, man seats gotta be upholstered front seats gotta start working on them doors gotta be finished and still not pushing anything how's my door look at that that's nice perfect and 10 is like 22 bucks brand new, but like a charm. Thing is, it goes up about 7 feet. You don't need that much. It's just there for looks. We'll see if we put a radio in. I don't know. But uh, it's been a good day. Like I said, got the brakes in, helped Dad. And uh, I'm going in. Have a good night. Oh, and on the brighter side, not that having brakes isn't a bright thing. My Jeep is back. It looks good. They did a great job. I had a nice dent there. I whipped out an air hose and uh, I let go of it and the friggin' chuck flew over and smacked the hood right there. That was awesome. That's gone. But they painted the hood, fixed the dent, got me new fenders, new directionals, new this. And then uh, like a day later I get this thing in the mail saying that my Jeep was totaled. <laughs> I'm like, really? Then how the hell, what the hell's in the driveway? Did they give me a new one? Looks really good. No complaints, except my bumper isn't green. And they took off my rope. What's up with that? I gotta do my headlight rings. I like green, if you haven't noticed. Everything I have is green. Look, look at what I'm wearing. Green. Brown. Green. 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 The seats are... Green. Really nice paint. Did a great job. You can see the trees. It's so shiny. Alright, well, I'll throw some pictures up of what it looked like before when it was uh, wrecked. I got cut off by a 20 year old kid with no license and uh, I nailed him. Took out the right rear quarter of his car, folded that wheel completely at a 45. Mine, it just dented the bumper, wrecked a fender, pushed things over a little bit. But I was looking, body mounts are back where they belong, everything looks great. Rides nice, and actually it rides better than it did before. But that's it, guys. Have a good night. I am going in. That seat.